the tin can, eh? That's okay. <laughs> you keep, you... Don't you kill the little one. Oh, you want to get that little tiny one? Oh, you knocked the whole thing over, <laughs> you! Oh, watch the muzzle of the gun. Don't let it get in the dirt. Okay, you leave the gun open and lay it on the ground on its side. Yeah, leave it open like that. And then we can go up and fix that target. Very good. I think when we take you out hunting and we see a grouse, I think you'll be able to get them pretty easy the way you're shooting now. Oh man, he's got that thing swinging away. Hello and welcome back to the Weighted Native Chronicles. In this video we're going to take a look at the introduction of a small boy to the art of shooting. He's one of our grandsons actually. In this video we're going to, for the most part, just watch as this training session progresses and I'll just jump in once in a while just to kind of interject a few tips that I think would be useful to be mindful of when you're teaching a young fella or a young girl how to shoot a gun for the first time. So if you appreciate this video and get some use out of it, I encourage you to click like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. But let's just start with this shooting session and I'll jump in here and there as needed. Do one more, sweetie. <laughs> I think you're going to do something weird. After I shoot, I do this. <laughs> no, uh, no, don't do that. Don't. I sh Always control I sh your muzzle of your gun. So. I, well, after I shoot it, I just... Yeah, and no, uh, don't, do, don't go do anything silly when you're shooting. Oh, I think you, you missed that one. You nicked that tin can, eh? That's okay. <laughs> you keep, you, here, I'll find it. I'll be behind you. He <laughs> dropped. <laughs> oh, shoot. Boy, Etsu. <laughs> Make sure of safety. Yep. I suggest that you start the young person off with a 22 rifle for their starting off point. Uh, an air rifle can be used as well. And in fact, I did learn how to shoot using air rifles myself. But honestly, the triggers on air rifles are, as a rule, they're very rough. and hard to pull and maybe not the ideal for learning to shoot. Get a, a good quality or decent quality 22. Something like this little rascal that really fills the bill. It's short and it's something that can properly fit a young person when they're handling a gun for the first time so they don't have to adopt some sort of strange kind of contortions to to shoot the rifle and get their head close enough to the sights and stuff like that and have a weird shoulder position. So if you can, one of these savage little rascals is ideal, but there's other choices out there too, I'm sure, depending on the size of the youngster that you're introducing to shooting. In this case, our grandson is still quite small. Hey, uh, oh, just a second before you shoot. Yes, try to put this against your shoulder, hold, aim it, yeah. Make sure the gun is against your shoulder, about like that. And then That's right. Good. That's good. Like, yeah, it's good if you have the, your cheek, cheek against the uh, stock. So if your cheek is against there, try aiming it like that without... No, yeah. here. Uh, here, hold this for a second. Hold the whole thing. I'm going to show you something. Here. Yeah, and then put your head against the yeah. stock. See where her cheek is? My yeah. head is too small. No, yeah, it's okay. your head is away from it, so it's yeah. there like this. 
straight yeah. up and then okay yeah that's right like that okay let's see if you can shoulder it yeah. the right way with it okay. this will make you shoot more accurately secondly i would strongly encourage you to make sure that rifle is sighted in very accurately before you start to there's nothing more unfair than teaching a young person how to shoot and they have miserable success and then later on you find out that it's not really their fault that this rifle was never capable of hitting the target in the first place. So get that rifle sighted in really well. Trigger, hands off the trigger, okay? Yeah, put you don't your put your finger on the trigger till no, it's... you not. Here, put your feet a little, like this a little bit forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah like standing this. sort of sideways almost to the target, Side. yeah. And then here, and there. just a minute. Yeah, and then your cheek against it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah, see, he's got it against his arm. He yeah. should put it closer to his shoulder. Yeah, just a And then, like then he yeah. can get his cheek on it. Like that, right there. It then won't. you can get your cheek okay. welded to the stock. That's, that's what I'm talking Very about. Good. Take your time. Don't uh -huh. Take your time. Cool. <laughs> Maybe try the little swinging targets. <laughs> you could be hitting that can too, and sometimes it just doesn't move. Yeah. Because the bullet goes through so fast. Maybe. Tr Maybe try a little fold closer. No, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. This may be a bit more controversial to say, but I think you're still better off starting a young person off with a very bare bones rifle, one without a scope. Get them on a rifle that has either open sights or peep sights. I'd actually recommend peep sights over open sights uh, because peep sight has an ability to take advantage of your propensity to center your eye in that rear sight in that circle so that all the young person has to do is just focus on getting that front sight to hold steady on the target basically. You can help them with that, you know, by having a, a circle and a finger and then having them do that as well, hold out their, their hand and put their finger and just get, make sure that they have the idea clear in their mind how this has got to work, where that, that front sight has to be on the target. This may seem so, so basic, but it actually is something that kids need to be told, especially if they're pretty small. In the case of open sights, you can use a, a V and and the target. Get them to hold that and show them that you know that top of that front sight has to be even with the top of these fingers, and then all three of them, the front sight has to be on the target that they're trying to hit. Very basic, but you really do have to make sure that they understand those things. Try the little red targets that you usually shoot first. And uh, try to get your cheek, yeah, that's right, that's yeah, how, right. yeah. Very good. Get your cheek against the stock so it's touching it. That holds your head steady. Oh. Yeah, like that with one leg like that. And then, and then your knee up. Look at that too, Nolan. And then this forward. You want to have your knee up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You then you can rest your arm yeah, on the, your yeah. left arm can rest on your leg. Another thing I would suggest is avoid semi-automatic rifles. We're talking mainly 22s, right? I would avoid semi-automatics. I uh, work behind the gun counter and I get a lot of fathers buying a gun, the first gun for their youngster to learn how to shoot. And so often they want to have a semi-automatic and quite often it's because the little guy thinks semi-automatics are pretty neat. But I would resist that trend. Uh, just get them a nice little single shot, ideally. Not even a repeater. 
A single shot is going to require them to invest more time into each shot. So when they go to take that shot, they're going to try a little bit harder to get everything right before they take their shot. If they're using a semi-automatic, they tend to get into this mindset of, well, I'll hit it eventually. And that's really a, a very wrong way to introduce kids to shooting, in my opinion. Especially if you're going to prepare them to be hunters, because you want them to take ethical shots. So, a single shot has got a lot of advantages going for it, and plus you're going to use a lot less ammunition too. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I guess ammo is good to have, eh? Yeah, okay. Just take your time. Put the gun yeah, right up against your shoulder. That's good. That's right, oh. yeah, that's more okay. like it. Uh, get just, a minute. just take the box there with you. Yeah, you can just take them out yourself. Oh yeah, good one. Another thing I would suggest when teaching a young person is don't overwhelm them with too much instruction. You've got lots of time. You can say to them, you know, here is how you should do it. They may forget it or they may disregard what you have to say because they pick up that rifle and they think this is the way to do it, you know, and they might have it against their arm or something like that and be you know, in all kinds of weird positions. So you're sometimes better off just let them, let them uh, sink under their own weight, sort of, you know, it's uh, give a few shots, maybe they're, and they're probably not going to have really good success, which is what you want, you know, because when they're doing it wrong, if they're hitting a target all the time, it's kind of hard to say uh, here's a better way to do it, but let them kind of work on it, uh, test things out a little bit, really that's what everybody does anyways, you try this way, you try that way, and then along the way you kind of give some, some gentle little nudges and suggestions and say, well, you know, why don't you tuck that rifle in a little bit uh, closer to you, to you instead of so far out, then you don't have to bend your head way over and you know, and then you can see, you know, down the, down the barrel a little better. Give them little hints and nudges, and if they don't follow it exactly, don't get too worked up. 22 ammunition is cheap. You've got lots of time. So, if you get too bossy, maybe you've got to take the fun out of it as well. Now, in that position, you could try the cam. Is it standing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You're doing it kind of right there. You're kind of sitting on your right foot like that. Yeah, very good. And just take your time. Uh, might want to go sideways. I'll let you okay, shoot that one. It's That's a little harder to hit. <laughs> yeah. You just uh, get yourself comfortable at the right position. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, get your head right against the stock. So you're looking through your right eye. Get your left eye closed if you have to. Yeah, you gotta close your left eye if you have yeah. to. Close your left eye and you so that you're right used looking through with your right eye. Another thing to keep in mind too is determine early on which of their eyes is dominant. So you can get them to, to do that, you know, by uh, holding, having both eyes open and putting their finger on the target and then closing one eye and closing the other eye and you, they can tell you 
one when they close one of those two eyes the finger is going to move off the target so find out which eye it is that is the one that's doing the, the dominance because uh, if you got a young fella with a uh, left eye dominant trying to shoot a right handed gun he's going to be cocking his head way over to the side and things are going to be very very awkward and disappointing too so you know if that's the case it may even be that the youngster needs to close one eye even though they've got the right eye dominant and they're shooting the right handed gun uh, it's not something we want to encourage long term but maybe starting off you could have them you know close close the left eye then and just make sure that you don't use the wrong eye when you're looking through the sights and that'll get them to get the right head position on the stock when they're shooting because there is a tendency for little fellas to cock their head too much and part of that too is that they're they're not tucking the gun in right so make sure that the prop right eye, the proper eye is looking through and then they can get that proper tuck of the stock against their shoulder and the head against the stock. Yeah, I saw it move. You, you shot the tree. I think you hit it. <laughs> no, I, the tree. <laughs> Wait, I saw a tree. The tree was, you saw the tree. <laughs> you think so? Uh -huh. Yeah, you're shooting just a little high. I was a little bit uh, angled and didn't I bet you if we go up there, we'll find some holes in that can. Yeah. Just wait till this. It would, if you hit it, I think you would knock off. Yeah, you're having a little trouble getting a comfortable position, eh? <laughs> okay, before you, okay, before you load it, just try without any ammo in it. Another reason for going with a rifle that's very basic in operation, like a single shot, is that lets you narrow down the types of issues that you need to focus on early on. The operation of the rifle is not that complex you don't have to worry about is your magazine in is it out and how do you chamber the next round and stuff like that they don't need to deal with that stuff early on with a single shot rifle they can just just focus on the basics like opening the action and laying the gun down before going up to check a target making sure that nobody touches that gun when somebody's out at the setting up targets things like how to use a safety on your rifle keeping your finger out of the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot proper muzzle control not swinging the gun around that's a lot of stuff for a little person to learn early on and uh, you don't need to make it any more complex than that so simple guns make for good instruction Oh, Get comfortable. Yeah. Actually, maybe you hold the camera here for a second. I'll give them some instruction. Yeah. See if I can help. How about this? Uh, have you got it loaded already again? No. No, eh? Here, let me work with you. He could there. try dry shots, Tom. So, now I think the way you're sitting is a little bit awkward. You can sit on your, on this foot here. Yeah. And then this part of your L arm, you want your not your elbow on your knee, because that wobbles, see? Eh? You want to have that part, eh? <laughs> this one's too high. Right? So you, you don't want your elbow here. You want your elbow there, right? And then when you're, when you're aiming, see, when you're, if you're looking through your right eye, then when you're aiming, your cheek, see, my cheek is right against there, right? Yeah. Then my head doesn't wobble around. No, it doesn't matter if your head is small or not. No, you can still do it. If your head is small, then you... you know, the other reason why a single shot is good too is it slows the whole process down. It gives them a little more time to take... They're going to invest more time taking a shot. And it gives them a little more time to ruminate on why they missed or why they hit it. You know, what was I doing different this time? You know, it seems, uh, it seems I'm able to hold the gun a little steadier. 
all this stuff is going on in their heads. You can't really do that for them. They have to be able to start to figure it out themselves. And if you slow down that process between shots, it gives them a little more time to contemplate what it is they're doing and what they can do to make it better. The little kids are not completely stupid. Yeah, no, you should be. So, but you see where I have the gun? It's against here. You're kind of putting it here, and because you put it here, then you have to reach your head over. You're sitting sideways, eh? And I would have to do that too. It'd be very hard to shoot. Then you have to hold your head up. But if you get the gun and you move it here, then real tight in over here, close to your face, then you can lay your cheek right against it. Okay? Dry fire first. Well, it doesn't have to dry fire. Yeah, see, now now you can get your cheek against the gun, right? See? It's see? a little if you, awkward. Yeah, well, then you get it close. See, you just... Yeah. I don't have any bullets. Yeah, okay. Let's get your bullet. <laughs> Squishies in there. Okay, let's try that. Now, the gun might be a little... sighted a little bit off, too. Left or right, that might be why you missed too. But, yeah, you get your arm, yeah. Another thing I would focus on, and again, as I said early on, not overwhelming the little person with too much information and instruction, but these are the kind of things you want to sort of pepper in here and there, little nudges, hey, uh, you know, why don't you hold your gun this way, why don't you shift your body a little bit more this way or that. Uh, you want to uh, have them holding that gun right. and. I think some of the common things I see with little guys is that they will take the rifle, you know, take this little rascal here, which is going to be kind of awkward for me, but, you know, they'll tend to hold a gun against their forearm, and then they got to kind of get their head way over like this, and they're trying to see through, and it's, you can see they're straining like crazy. You just got to get them to move that rifle in, and then they can get their cheek against the stock because quite often they're going to be like this and their the head is wavering around trying to hold the gun steady and hold their head and the sights are moving around but if you can get them to get their head right solid against the stock then it makes everything a whole lot easier the whole business of trying to aim a rifle is it's got enough involved in it without having to deal with improper form. So by all means, let them try it their way a little bit, but get nudge them towards using the proper position. And that goes with teaching them to shoot from a kneeling position as well. You might have your way of doing it, but their little bodies are constructed a bit different, I think, and it seems to me that, that my way of kneeling to shoot and a little kid's way of kneeling to shoot are quite different and I can't make them do it my way. So just let them figure it out to some extent themselves. But you, know, you do want to avoid certain things like having the ball of your elbow sitting on your knee. You know, get them to put the flat of the arm on the knee. Try to encourage them to hold this, this part of their arm more or less vertical when they're shooting instead of shooting like this. Uh, there's a lot of little tips, but those are refinements that come along. And I think when a kid does their own way and they get kind of nudged into trying this, trying that, they, they, it really starts to stick with them because they right away feel more confident in their shots. Huh. Let me try that. It's a sight did move on this gun, so it might have, might have gone off on one side. Okay, I'll try to make an accurate shot. If I miss, then the gun might be off a bit. Yeah, I think it might be off. Yeah, Let me try the target. Eight. I might have to move. It's hard to hit us. It's off left and right. This is my actual and It's hard to hit a little target like that. He seemed to shoot that one pretty good, so.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got it right dead center, it looks like. Well, it seems to be good that way. Let me try one more at the can then. And then I'm going to check that can, see if it's got a bunch of holes in it. Another mistake I see little persons make very often is they hold their head way too far from the sights and they're sitting way back like this. You've probably seen that too, eh? A lot of new shooters do that. And they're, I don't know exactly why. I think they think that it gives them an advantage. But, and, but get them to get their eye close enough uh, in the proper position on the stock. Well, that's one thing I would watch out for as well. Yeah, we right. told... I see a hole in it. Yeah, eh? It, Nick, okay, let me see, Don, okay. here. You now we open the gun, lay Just it down, and we can walk up there and take a look. Yes, we just about kicked all the bullets. Oh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of holes in there. See? What? I get that one? Yeah, she's just not moving. Oh. Yeah, see? No, then, on real. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At least seven shots to it. Northern, you got it. Yeah, so you're hitting it all <laughs> it over. It hit the tree too. That's why the tree wobbled. <laughs> no, he it went through. Still yeah. poking there. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. All those shots we shot right in this. Yeah. No, I yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to do now? Shoot more at that target? Yeah, I think that's probably the best. Yeah. Another thing I would suggest is when you get the uh, little person out in the field, try to have some reactive targets with you. Things that will move or clang or react when they get hit. Paper is good for maybe later on, but I think you know if you have tin cans, tin cans mounted in a way that they will move when they're hit, because they sometimes just sit there and the bullet goes through, and. You, as you'll see in this video too, it's, uh, we were shooting at a tin can that was stuck on a tree and a uh, little fellow was hitting it lots, but you couldn't tell that he was hitting it. it the bolts just went through and then didn't move the can at all. But the little swinging targets, those were excellent. So they have to have that feedback right away of are they doing it right or not. And if they're doing it right and then all of a sudden they start missing a whole bunch of times in a row, then then uh, they will start thinking, boy, uh, I've got to up my game here, and what am I doing wrong? And they'll, that's when they'll be more receptive to a little bit of coaching. Okay. This is so you remember what I told you about how to hold the gun against your shoulder, eh? If your cheek doesn't touch the, the uh, stock, be careful about putting the muzzle of the gun in the... the yeah. Don't put the front point of the gun into the ground. Yeah, watch it. Okay, yeah. So you got it close it's, enough. It's, it's not a really yeah. shaky Yeah, so you got that. it nice and yeah. close in there. Yeah. And yeah. then you can get your head. That's what I want to see, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, ammo. you can put some ammo in it. You've yeah, got the box right, right there. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess you can do it that way. Did you, just, did you miss? <laughs> I shot it and then I just... Okay, try another one. <laughs> you might, you might be able to hold your, move your head forward a little bit too. And not so far back. Yeah, a little bit closer. Not, yeah, like that I think. Finally, one of the tips I would pass along to the young people is regarding trigger control. It's really at the center of good shooting of whether it's handguns or rifles. And when it comes to uh, somebody starting off, especially little people, I think you can undo your efforts a little bit by focusing too, too much on, on accuracy. In fact, that's a good reason for bringing the targets a little bit closer if they're missing. If you stress accuracy and misses and hits and misses and hits too much, you going to introduce a certain kind of stress into the situation and it's my belief that that 
uh, effort to hit a very small target with great precision can be a little bit counterproductive when you're starting off a young person because what they're going to tend to do is they're going to tend to pull the trigger when, when the sights are just on the target because they can't hold their gun steady enough to keep the sights lined up on the target all the time while they're pulling the trigger so they're missing and they're hitting and they're missing and they're hitting so they start to quite reasonably think that well uh, since I can't hold my sights steady enough to stay on the target I better just take advantage of any time that the, the sights cross the target momentarily and quickly pull the trigger that's really really bad very bad for uh, and I, I think it's really how most people actually shoot even into their adult years it's not the way to shoot as you get to be a better shot more experienced you will begin to be able to hold your sight steadier on the target and holding on the target while you're applying pressure to the trigger so you're combining two different things at, at once. I have a video on handgun shooting and precision handgun shooting and I'll put a link to that over here and uh, put another link to it at the end of this video so you can find it maybe I'll pop one into the description as well. It's a really good treatment of this subject but basically what it boils down to is you have to be increasing pressure on the trigger just gradually until it breaks at a time that you don't exactly predict. So this whole idea of uh, picking a, you're taking your chance while the sights cross the target leads to jerking the trigger which is just bad bad fundamentals. With a young person don't stress them out too much about hitting the target or if or at least move the target closer so it seems like they're quite successful and that way they can be more receptive to your coaching when it comes to squeeze that trigger you gotta remind them over and over squeeze don't don't yank it don't jerk it just just squeeze it what you really have to do is you have to commit to your shot that you're gonna get your sights they're waving around pretty close to to being exact on the target and you start to increase pressure on the trigger and you commit to it you're going to go all the way through boom not predicting the exact time the trigger goes off but once you've got yourself set you start to commit to pulling the trigger and you don't go back after that a lot of people think well that can't be as accurate but it actually is it's the most accurate way to shoot this is perfect yeah then you'll be able to see better Oh yeah, good one. <laughs> I shot the middle of the big one. <laughs> Very good. I'm going to try to shoot the tiny one. Mm-hmm. But I've never been before. <laughs> okay. I think your, your, your form is much better now. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Oh, you want to get that little tiny one? Oh, you knocked the whole thing over. <laughs> you. Okay, I now you're gonna. I'm collapse. taking that gun. Oh, watch the muzzle of the gun. Don't let it get in the dirt. Make sure it's empty. You knocked my target over. Now I'm gonna take all your guns and bolts away. <laughs> okay, you leave the gun open and lay it on the ground on its side. Yeah, leave it open like that. And then we can go up and fix that target. So that concludes this video on introducing a young person, a little boy in this case, to shooting. It's something that many of us have done or will do in the future. It's really a great thing to be able to introduce a young person to shooting. It makes a lot of difference down the road if it's done right, that they will get something good out of it, they will develop confidence and continue shooting and hunting for you know the rest of their life if they have a bad experience starting off it could turn them sour on it forever so it's really a good idea to put some thought into this and get them started off right 
And one of the ways that makes it right is if they can become good shots. So some of these tips that I've been trying to share with you, I hope you find them useful. If you have, then definitely click like so that this video gets out there and more prospective teachers see it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that notifications button. Also, that will let you know when our next video comes out. So, from the way to Native Chronicles, I'd like to wish you God bless. We'll catch you next time.